Good evening, ghoulies and ghosties and long-leggedy beasties. This is Alex, coming at you from the underworld, and welcome back to another episode of... This weekend, I'm reviewing Dark Hollow by Brian Keane, and before I get started, I would like to let everyone know that this awesome book starts on the first of spring. So if you're the kind of person who likes to coordinate what you read with a specific time of year, at least I'm able to give you a heads up before 2022 that Dark Hollow is the perfect book to start on spring equinox. But aside from that, this was actually the first Brian Keene book I ever read, and due to how much I enjoyed it, I know it won't be the last of his that I read, so totally expect more Keene reviews in the near future. Also, I would like to give a shout out to my good online friend Brandy because we ended up reading this as a birthday buddy read, which I think we've started a pretty cool tradition here where whenever one of our birthdays come around, the birthday person gets to pick a book they would like to read, then we read it together. Which, under this circumstance, it was my birthday, so I picked Dark Hollow. But due to life happening, I wasn't able to start this until Easter Sunday. So, for those of you who have read this book, you can only imagine my surprise as I was sitting outside just enjoying the weather on Easter Sunday, and then bam, all of a sudden chapter 3 comes, and I'm reading about some chick who's bobbing for apples on a satyr statue. So... Yeah, y'all, I promise, I wasn't always the filth lover that you see before you. As a matter of fact, there used to be a time in my life where I would hunt eggs on this day. But, anywho, without me rambling on anymore, I would just like to say thank you to Brandy for reading this book with me. I really did enjoy the discussions that we had. And if you're watching this video, I hope you enjoy the review. Unfortunately, I don't have a print copy of Dark Hollow. However, this is available in print, ebook, and audio wherever books are sold, so getting your hands on a copy is not hard to do. Now, Dark Hollow by Brian Keane introduces a mystery author by the name of Adam who has prematurely quit his job prior to understanding how book payouts work. And while he stays home to pursue his writing career, his wife Tara continues to work until he receives his next book advance, which this allows him the opportunity to perform basic duties around the house as they arise. Like, for example, on this one particular spring day, he's out walking their dog Big Steve. However, the tranquility of their walk changes when they notice this mysterious flute music coming from within the woods of Leehorn's Hollow. And even though Leehorn's Hollow has this infamous reputation for being haunted, he and Big Steve decide to seek out the flute player. From here, they enter this clearing where Adam sees his neighbor Shelley, who is performing a fellatio on a satyr statue. Yet, while she's giving oral, the statue comes to life as it was only hibernating. Then, as Adam is able to escape, he tries to rationalize what he saw, and he kind of excuses it as being a role-playing game. However, over the next few nights, Adam discovers that an evil satyr by the name of Hylenius is stalking his neighborhood. And as Hylenius is gyrating around playing his aphrodisiac flute, all of the women from Adam's neighborhood falls under Hylenius' spell, where they are expected to bear his unholy children. Dark Hollow was published in 2006, with its original title being The Rutting Season, and it was re-released in 2012 by Dead Eye Press under its current title. Location-wise, the story takes place in Pennsylvania, and its fictitious setting of Leehorn's Hollow was inspired by an actual location called Rainmire's Hollow, which was also known as Hex Hollow. Then decades after the 1928 murder of Nelson Ray Meyer, who inspired Dark Hollow's fictional character Nelson Lehorn, Ray Meyer's Hollow underwent the name change to Spring Valley County Park. In an episode of Make Me Read Your Book podcast, Keane noted for new readers to either read Ghoul or Dark Hollow as a starting point into his work. Keane then explained that Dark Hollow is a personal novel, and among its many topics, its central focus is about a marriage falling apart despite all efforts, which in real life, 
Keen had unfortunately suffered three miscarriages, and due to that tragic loss, his emotions and experience built Adam's backstory. Fun Facts since Dark Hollow uses a satyr and powwow folk magic in its storyline, here's a few things that you might not know about those subjects. Satyrs are based in Greek mythology and are described as one of a class of lustful drunken woodland gods. In Greek art, they are represented as a man with a horse's ears and tail, but in Roman representations as a man with a goat's ears, tail, legs, and horns. On mythology.net, Satyrs are detailed as the original party animals who entertained the god of wine known as Dionysus. Yet, despite their dancing, music, and celebrations, they would destroy anything that stood in their way, and they posed a threat to women as satyrs are lustful and won't take no as an answer. Satyrs are also known as great dancers, and some of their dances are ritualistic to help crops grow or to appease the gods. Powwow is an Algonquin word that means healing. However, the practice of powwow folk magic isn't based in Native American roots. Instead, powwow folk magic is a mixture of healing remedies, symbols, and Christian theology that was brought to Pennsylvania during its colonial period by German settlers where the Algonquin tribe resided. Some of the practices in powwow include many charms and spells for protection and healing. For healing, Powwowers often use a combination of consecrated objects, invocations, and herbal remedies. For protection, sacred symbols were invoked that are also known as hex signs. In powwowing, the Bible is the most important source of literature. Also included are grimoires, the sixth and seventh book of Moses, and more. Still, today in some regions of North America, the traditions of powwow folk magic are still being practiced. Now that we have that covered, it's time to move on to the spoiler section, which, if you haven't read this book before, I'm about to reveal some things that could ruin the experience for you. So if you wish to click away, all you have to do is scroll down to the comments and you'll notice that I provided a timestamp in the pinned comment at the top. All you have to do is click on that timestamp and it will redirect you from the spoilers to the thoughts section. Now, you only have 17 seconds to do this, so ready, set, go! Since everyone's had the opportunity to click away, I would like to talk about a couple of my favorite moments, as well as an ending that was extremely creepy and unsettling. Now, first up, I would like to talk about when Adam and his friends found Nelson Lehorn's journal, which this revealed in March of 85 that Nelson and his family had been living a farming lifestyle, and Nelson had continued to practice powwow folk magic. Then one day, when Nelson was walking around, he discovered that this could be a bad year for crops, so he turns to Aladdin Grimoire to help them grow. But he doesn't really understand how to read Latin, so he has to rely on a dark practitioner of powwow by the name of O'Connor to translate for him. However, shortly thereafter, he discovers that O'Connor had tricked him, and now there's demons possessing the trees, and there's a satyr running around by the name of Hylenius, and the thing is, Nelson is actually able to turn the demons and Hylenius into stone, but not before Hylenius impregnates his wife. So even though I was already invested in this awesome story, this whole segment really just upped the ante for me. Which, first off, I absolutely love the difference in language and personality between Adam and Nelson, and even though I enjoyed Adam's contemporary perspective on everything, it was just really cool to gain Nelson's voice because he really had this rich form of storytelling that we just don't see anymore. Also, I really love the examples that were given to us for powwowing, and it was really creepy how Nelson's wife and daughters were described after Hylenius had ravished them. And in my opinion, this whole segment was just so awesome, it could have honestly been fleshed out into an entire different book. 
My next favorite moment was the showdown in Lee Horn's Hollow, which this came about after Adam and his friends learned how to use powwow to defeat Hylanius. Now, in this scene, after the men gear up and they grab Big Steve, they go off to the hollow with a detective and policeman. Then, once they're deep within the woods, they get attacked by the possessed trees, where we actually lose a few characters here. And even though we get some pretty nasty bloodshed, Adam and Merle are able to kill the tree demons by shooting silver bullets and also swinging a silver-studded baseball bat. After that, they hear this flute music playing in the distance, and when they follow the music, they find the missing women who are being hypnotized by Hylenius's pipes, which, due to the spell they're under, the women attack the men, and we have this huge-ass fight. And while this is going on, Big Steve attacks Hylenius and rips him a new asshole, which this allows Adam to gain the upper hand and bring him down. And then we have like this really cool binding ritual where Adam blows this blessed cigarette smoke into Hylanius' lungs and kills him. And y'all, this moment was so intense. Like there was so much crap going down and at the same time it quenched my bloodthirst. Like we have where Hylanius goes down, Merle gets castrated, we have men who get killed by trees, and the list continues. Also, even though I'm more of a cat person than a dog person, when Big Steve died, it really did rip my heart out. So because of how all of this blends just perfectly together, Keen really deserves some major kudos. The final moment I would like to talk about is the end, which at this point Adam has started a journal, six months have passed from their showdown, and his and Tara's relationship has unfortunately deteriorated even more. Also, we learn that Tara has finally become pregnant, but when Adam wants to see an ultrasound photo, she says there isn't one. Then when he finally does find a photo of the ultrasound, he sees that their baby actually has horns and hooves. From here, the book ends, indicating that history has repeated itself, and they're doomed to suffer a similar fate to the Lee Horns. So, considering how bleak this book was at the beginning in regards to Adam and Tara's miscarriages, I should have assumed that it was going to end on a similar note. But for a minute, I really did think that after the satyr was out of the picture, Adam would have been able to save their relationship by communicating more. But as the chapter unfolded, I saw that this was not going to be the case. And even though the ending didn't scare me, the whole horrific concept of being pregnant with like this satyr spawn thing, and also just history repeating itself stayed with me for days to come. And I really do believe that had Adam and Nelson been more open and willing to listen to their families, this outcome could have been avoided. Like, I do see where they were able to save their families from the external problem regarding Hylenius. However, they never took care of any internal issues regarding their emotions. And because of their failure to communicate, this put a bigger gap in their relationships, and in the end, it made their relationships weak. Normally, I use this opportunity to bitch about characters, but under this circumstance, there wasn't really anyone I wanted to bitch about. Now, this doesn't mean that the cast that we were given were without flaws. It's just that I really felt sorry for everyone, especially Adam and Tara. So, since I'm not going to bitch, I would like to take this opportunity to talk about Adam, because even though I was rooting for him, I felt really sorry that he let his toxic masculinity prevent him from opening up to Tara about their miscarriages. And since everything is taken from Adam's perspective, this helped me understand the amount of torment he was going through emotionally and spiritually, which due to this, I gained some insight that I didn't have before in regards to how men might feel when there's a miscarriage. Also, even though Adam did everything he thought possible to help Tara, like with comforting her and everything, I do believe that if he had opened up and had expressed his emotions to her about their circumstance, this could have made them a stronger couple and it could have aided in the healing process. But unfortunately, this didn't happen.
Dark Hollow is a fun thrill ride that is best suitable in the subgenre of erotic horror. And even though this book does have some explicit sex scenes as well as graphic horror, there is so much more to this work instead of just sex and violence. Like, for example, the setting was inspired by an actual location, we have some mythological and folk magic background accuracy, and the character development was damn superb. Also, this book does touch on some pretty hard-hitting subjects like toxic masculinity, male insecurity, spiritual conflicts, and the deconstruction of a relationship. Plus, it does somewhat comment on penis envy just a little bit. Setting-wise, I was immediately drawn to Lee Myers Hollow, which this is mostly because I've always been a sucker for the bad place scenario, especially if that bad place happens to be in the woods. But what made this especially interesting was when I discovered that the hollow was inspired by an actual location called Ray Myers Hollow, which, as you can imagine, after I found this out, it led me down a rabbit hole and my fandom for this book increased. Research-wise, I really appreciated the mythological accuracy that Keen breathed into Hylanius, where instead of Hylanius just seeming like a sex-crazed satyr, we get this character development that makes him feel like he's a Pied Piper to women. Also, I really did appreciate the research that Dell did, as well as the information that we found in Nelson's journal, because due to that, we actually somewhat receive an origin story for Hylanius. Plus, another thing I loved was the amount of research and creativity that Keen invested with powwow folk magic, which, thanks to Nelson's journal and also other dialogue, I could tell where Keen actually did thorough research before writing. Character-wise, Keen provides us with a great cast who feel like actual next-door neighbors, and due to how they interacted, we gain a great sense of community among them. Also, at times they reminded me of a horror version of King of the Hill, so that was pretty awesome. But among the characters, I was really surprised to see how much development had been invested in Tara and Adam's dog, Big Steve. And I was like, why is the dog being focused on so much? Then I realized that since they can't conceive, Tara and Adam invested their emotions and love into Big Steve as they would of a human child. Also, I thought it was really cool how even though Big Steve was this huge baby, he was really a great protector, and he lived up to Nelson's philosophy about how dogs are close to God. And in that philosophy, I found it interesting that even though Adam feels like God had wronged him or maybe even abandoned him, Big Steve stayed at his side. Theme-wise, the subject that enlightened me the most was toxic masculinity, which this is seen by how Adam doesn't emotionally open up to Tara about their miscarriages. And don't get me wrong, he did try to comfort her to the best of his ability, but part of the healing process is to share your emotions with your spouse. Now, I've never been the kind of person to bottle up my emotions because I understand that can harbor some negative side effects. But not until I read Dark Hollow did I understand that toxic masculinity also included men who keep their emotions bottled up for fear of being perceived as weak. Which, this topic leads to the subject of the deconstruction of relationships, which I touched on that in the spoilers section, so I'm not going to revisit that topic here. The next subject that I noticed was male insecurity, which not only did this come about by how Adam felt in regards to the miscarriages, but it's also seen by how Dell is impotent, Merle has undergone a divorce, and Cliff is leading this bachelorette lifestyle that might indicate he's too insecure to settle. Then, as they're going through all of that, here comes Hylanius, who is able to sexually provide women with everything that they're not able to. And from this perspective, it really does comment on how some men fear that one day a better lover will come along and swoon their spouse with song and dance. The final subject I noticed was spiritual conflict, which this is seen by how Adam blasphemes God because he blames God for the miscarriages that he and Tara had suffered. But eventually he has to put that animosity aside because he has to rely on the older ways and blessings in order to defeat Hylenius. 
Now, truth be it, I could go on and on and on about the characters and themes in this book, but if I did so, this video would be an hour long, so I'm not going to do that. But at the end of the day, Dark Hollow didn't scare me, but there were times where I felt disturbed, I felt enlightened, and for the most part, I was kept on the edge of my seat. Plus, I really felt like the ending was one of those type of endings where it just stayed with me for days to come, and it left me feeling very unsettled. Dark Hollow by Brian Keane is a thought-provoking work that has the perfect blend of sex, violence, and heart. And since I've never read Keane before, I think this book is a great starting point. Now, even though I do highly recommend Dark Hollow, the book does describe a very graphic miscarriage. So if that topic is triggering for you, then you might want to avoid this book. Otherwise, if you're looking for an awesome erotic horror story with likable characters, then Dark Hollow is totally for you. On to the questions. What is a horror book you would recommend that falls into the subcategory of erotic horror? Also, since this past weekend was Walpurgis Night and halfway to Halloween, did you do anything special? Personally, I didn't do anything more than just lounge around and watch a few witch-based movies. Like, I started off with one of my favorites, which is an 80s classic called Superstition, then I watched Lords of Salem, and I finished it off with the classic Suspiria. So, that was pretty much my night. Before I close out my video, I would just like to let everybody know that Carrie and I have both had our Moderna shots, and as of now, we are fully vaccinated. So if you haven't received your shots yet, please consider doing so, or talk to your doctor about possibly getting the vaccine. As far as side effects are concerned, all I had was a sore arm, and as far as Carrie is concerned, he just had a small low-grade fever and just kind of felt tired. So that was about it for us. Before I close out, I would like to say thank you to Lisa G, as well as J.L. Mulvihill, which J.L. Mulvihill is a young adult fantasy steampunk author, and her books are available in print, ebook, and audio wherever books are sold. Also, I would like to say thank you to Melody Romeo, which Melody Romeo is a historic fiction fantasy author, and her books are available in print and ebook wherever books are sold. Also, I would like to say thank you to Nicholas Gray, which Nicholas Gray is a horror author whose books are available in print and ebook, as well as a few being available in audio wherever books are sold. And last but not least, I would like to say thank you to my mom and grandma. Now, if you're wondering why I'm giving a shout out to these wonderful people, it's because they've had the opportunity to contribute to my Patreon account. And if you would like to contribute as well, there's a link available in the description section of this video. And for $5 a month, I'll give you a shout out at the end of my videos. And if you have a profession that you would like for me to tie to your name, just let me know and I'll shout that out as well. Also, I do have a $10 tier available, which for $10 a month, you'll still receive the shout out at the end of my videos, but I do creepy photography on the side, so at the beginning of every month, I'll send you over a photo, and from there, you can print it off, do whatever you like. So if you're able to do this, that's awesome. If not, no sweat. I hope you just return to this channel so we can have a good time together. And if you would like to hunt me down on social media, links to my Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok are all in the description section of this video. And if you have yet to subscribe to this channel, be sure to subscribe and click that notifications bell because I have more book reviews coming in the near future. So until we see each other again, I hope you have a great week and sweet nightmares.